This week in H10 EMA, we've gone back to basics. We've been looking at Ohm's law, which is voltage equals current time resistance. And if you listen to Frank, he jokes that's the only equation you really need to know for this module. The other thing we've looked at is how to look at resistance on a terms of resistivity. So how does the material have a resistivity and how does that go on to reflect the resistance? This idea is based on the premise, if we have two pipes, these are just tubes, but go with me, imagine they're pipes. If you wanted to put water through, you'd be able to do that and think, well, I'm gonna be able to get a lower resistance from the bigger tube than if I try and put water through the smaller tube. And copper wire works in a very similar way. If we have a big fat chunk of copper as a wire, this is much more appropriate for something like a main supply voltage than something like this, which will get very, very hot and end quite badly. There's no ROGO test this week. However, next week's ROGO homework will take into account the content studied this week and next week. So we're going to look in detail at a wire. Here we can see a picture of a wire and we can see the exposed metal ends and the main section which is covered in a piece of coloured plastic. The plastic is there. Well, the colour is helpful because it means we can detect which wire goes to which component in a circuit if we think about our colour scheme when we're building but also it stops it short circuiting if it happens to touch any other wires. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at that metal end and look at it in a little bit more detail as what's going on inside. So inside a metal we have atoms and the part of particular interest to us in the atom are the electrons and the electrons as we know are negatively charged particles which orbit a nucleus in an atom and the electrons in this picture are the black dots. In a metal some electrons are free to move through the material and we can make use of this by applying a voltage across the wire. So here we've got a symbol for a battery and it's got a positive end and a negative end. This means that one end of the wire is going to be positive and the other end is going to be negative. What happens is that these free electrons will move towards the positive end of the wire because they're negatively charged and they're attracted towards the positive. This movement of electrons in a wire is electrical current. The unit of current is the amp and it has the symbol capital A. So we said before the free electrons move from negative to positive. However, we say that conventional current flows from positive to negative around a circuit. From this point onwards, we'll be talking about conventional current. So you don't need to worry about the fact that electrons are the charge carriers and are actually moving towards the positive. So we looked at current in a wire before and current doesn't flow in a wire unless we apply a voltage across it. We can imagine a voltage as pushing a current through a wire. So generally, if you have a larger voltage, you're going to have a larger current. In consumer electronics, the voltage comes from a battery or from the main supply via a plug. And here's a picture of some different batteries so you can get an idea of their size and the different values available. You can see a ruler at the end, which is in centimetres and a matchstick just for scale. We have coin cell batteries on the far right. These are often found in watches and in some applications where you need a small battery, like say the key fob for a car alarm. Then we've got the sort of nine volt battery that you may find in school science classes. Then you've got the triple A's, the double A's and those types of batteries, which are all different voltages. The electrical symbol for a battery can be drawn as either of these. So technically, this is the symbol for what's known as a cell, which is one part of a battery. So the single one is either used as a battery or as a cell, but a battery is in reality made up from many cells connected together, which is why you'll sometimes see a battery as the bigger symbol. There are also a variety of symbols that can be used to show batteries or power supplies in circuits. We've just looked at batteries, but you may also see this type of source, which is the same as a battery, but often used to show a main supply. So it still has a positive and a negative terminal, and it's still providing that direct current supply. You may also see in circuits 
voltage is shown as what are known as rails. Here we've got a positive voltage rail which is shown as plus 5 volts and then we've got a corresponding ground which is shown by the symbol connected to the line. You may also see voltage is shown as these types of symbols where we've got the plus 5 is the arrow pointing upwards and then the ground is the arrow pointing downwards. Ohm's law gives the relationship between the three fundamental components we've looked at in circuits so far, being current, voltage and resistance. This equation triangle shows how we need to arrange the parts to find a third value. So let's put in our current with the symbol I, our voltage with the symbol V and our resistance with the symbol R. In the rest of this video we'll run through some examples. First up we're going to find current. So here's an example circuit. We have a DC power supply which is 10 volts and a 50 ohm resistor. We want to find the current flowing through this circuit. We know the direction of the current because current flows from positive to negative, so we just want to find the size of it. Here's our equation triangle. Let's rearrange and find the values we need. So we can see that to find current I, we want to find V divided by R. Let's substitute the values we have in, so we know that V is 10 volts and R is 50 ohms. We put these in and we get a current of 0.2 amps out and that's our answer. Let's find a voltage. Here's our circuit again. This time we know the current which is 0.2 amps, we've got a resistor that's 50 ohms and we want to find what the value of our power supply is in volts. The eagle-eyed of you will notice that this is the same circuit we used in the previous part of this video, but we're just going to prove that everything does mesh together the way it should. So here's our equation triangle. Now let's find what we need to find V. This time we can see to find a voltage we need to take the current and then multiply it by the resistance. Let's substitute these values in so we know I is 0.2 amps and R is 50 ohms. This gives us a voltage of 10 volts, which is what we'd expect. Finally, let's look at how we find resistance. Here's our circuit. We've got a 10 volt power supply and a current flowing through the circuit of 0.2 amps. So how do we find the value of the resistor R? Let's look at our equation triangle and rearrange. This time we can see that to find the resistance R, we need to take the voltage and divide it by the current. If we substitute those values in, we end up with R is equal to 50 ohms, which is again what we'd expect. You can use Ohm's law in many different applications and it's an incredibly useful and fundamental part of electrical engineering. When resistors are in series, this means they're connected so that the same current will flow through both of them. So here's an example circuit. We have a DC power supply which will supply a current and then we can see we've got two 25 ohm resistors and these are connected in series. Here's our current and we can see it flowing round the circuit and through each of the resistors in turn. We can combine these two resistors and replace them with a single resistor by using the formula R total is equal to R1 plus R2. So R total is the single resistor that we're going to replace these with, R1 is the first resistor and R2 is the second resistor. We can substitute the values of R1 and R2 into our equation which are both 25 ohms as we can see from the diagram and this gives us a total resistance of 50 ohms. So what we can do is we can take these two resistors and replace them with one single 50 ohm resistor and its equivalent. We can combine as many series resistors as we need to by changing the formula slightly to be R total is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus however many resistors you have connected in series. When resistors are in parallel, this means they're connected so that the current will split and flow through both of these. So let's see what happens. Our current gets to this part where the wires split. The current then splits into two smaller parts and continues round the circuit.
these then join back together again and this continues back around. However, we're going to focus on these resistor values rather than how the current splits. But this is what it means when we connect resistors in parallel. What we can do is we can combine these two resistors to form a single resistor by using the formula 1 over R total, where R total is going to be the single resistor, is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. R1 and R2 are the values of the original resistors. Let's substitute those values in and see what happens. Each of these resistors is 25 ohms, so let's put the values in. We then do a little bit of maths. And we end up with the final answer that our total is 12.5 ohms. This means that we can replace those two resistors with a single 12.5 ohm resistor. You'll have some useful functions on your calculator to speed this up for you. We can combine as many parallel resistors as we need to by changing the formula slightly to be 1 over our total, which is going to be our total is our single value of resistor, is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 and so on until you've put all of your resistor values in. This is what it would look like in a circuit. We've got many resistors now connected in parallel and it looks a little bit like a ladder. So to summarise, if we combine resistors in series, this will increase the total resistance. If we combine resistors in parallel, this reduces the total resistance. So you can use this to check to see if your answer makes sense.